Okay, so the easiest way to explain how to tie this fly is to show you all the materials first and then we'll get down to it. This is the Lano Bug kit that I sell. Try to get it out of the glare, there we go. So let me show you what's all inside. Okay, we have deer hair. You'll need that for the wing. Rubber legs, need those. Some yellow Antron dubbing. 24 TMC 200R number four hooks. Some UTC 140 uh, yellow thread. Some different uh, two millimeter quarter inch wide foam strips. And every video, every uh, kit comes with a video. So that's what you get. That's all the stuff you need. So we got the video, um, which I'm shooting. Uh, foam strips, hooks, dubbing, legs, deer hair, and thread. That ought to do you. Okay, let's get started. We've got the hook and the vise. We're going to go ahead and attach our thread. Take it to the back of the bend. Like thus. There we go. Trim off this tag end. I do want to say something about the video. The video that comes with the kit is much better than this. It's uh, shot with three different cameras, high def, much better, but this is just quick and dirty. I'm going to take my foam strip. I'm going to cut it into a little picket so it looks like a picket fence, just like that. We're going to take it. We're going to lay it on top. We're going to tie right through the middle of the picket, tie it down, get a good tie down. Then we're going to go back to the beginning, fold it over, make sure we can't see any thread wraps. If we can, like I can, we're going to wrap back just a little bit. We don't want to see any thread wraps. Now I can't see them. So we've got that tied in on top. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our dubbing. And as with most dubbing, less is more. I'm going to take just the tip of it and spin it, tie it down parallel the thread with the dubbing and I'm just going to wrap a body. As I'm going I'm just feeding that dubbing out. It's a lot quicker than, than touch dubbing or doing anything else. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way up. I'm going to come back and what I'm aiming for is a cigar shaped body. I want a little fatter in the middle a little tapered on the end, so I don't quite have enough dubbing, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more. Just spin it on the thread, and then just feed it off. Much faster than normal dubbing. Do not, I repeat, do not use chenille for this. It's much quicker, and it defeats the purpose of the fly because it will sink. Do not use chenille. That is a shortcut I see all over the internet for this fly. It is wrong. Do not do it. Nice tapered body. We're going to take this. We're going to fold it over. We are going to tie it down. Nice hump back. We're going to flip it forward. We're going to tie our thread all the way to the front. We are going to form this beautiful little flat space, nice body segment, and then we are going to completely destroy it by flattening it down. Again, this is one of the things that I see all of the Lano Bug instructions on the internet get it wrong. You have to have this flat part here. This is critical. This flat area is critical. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie the legs in. We tie them in and we maintain that gap. That, again, is where everybody makes a mistake on YouTube. They get it wrong. We have tried it many, many times. This gap in here is critical. If you do not have it, the legs will foul. They'll foul on the hook. They'll foul all over the place. It has to maintain that gap right there. That is critical. Now, we take the other legs. We tie them on the other side. Boom. Whoops. Get them nailed down. Don't worry if they're in position because you can tweak them into position. You just take them and turn them. Now you should have legs that look like this. Again, notice the gap. I hate to harp on that, but that's critical. We worked on this fly for years. 
We tried it without that gap and it just doesn't work. Okay, we've got our legs in place. We have a nice body. We have a nice belly. Now we're gonna put the wing on. We take some deer hair. We cut off a piece of deer hair. Cut it as low to the skin as you can. Down and cut. Now, it's gonna be uneven. You can either put it in a hair stacker or you can do it the way I'm gonna show you. It's much quicker. First of all, you need to get rid of the under fur. So I take my scissors and I comb it out. All that stuff is no good. It absorbs water, sinks the fly. You can use a mustache comb, a bone comb, or you can just use your scissor tips. Now, check the ends. You see how they're uneven. I'm simply gonna take them in my hand and I'm gonna tap them and even them up. Now, if there's some that don't play ball, take them out, just a few of them. These do not have to be completely even. Nothing in nature is even and perfect. We're gonna take the tips and we are going to lay them over the fly like that. I want them to extend just past the butt of the fly. You see how it just passed. I'm gonna switch hands. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to very slightly wrap that thread, holding it the whole time. Now I let go of it. Now, because that gap is still in there, I can now trim the butts away from the tips without cutting the tips off. Get all that out of there. I'm gonna wrap over it one more time. And these don't have to be super tight wraps, just tight enough. If you've got one that's not playing ball, get rid of it. Now, I position my thread at the back of the flat part. I fold the head over. I take three wraps. One, two, three. That's it. If you wrap too tight on that, you'll cut right through the foam. Then I take my scissors and I cut right there, leaving that little flange sticking up. That will help you when you get it stuck in a tree, kind of works its way out. Now to finish the fly, you cannot whip finish this because the foam grabs onto the thread. So you're gonna put four half hitches on there. One, two, three, and four, and you're gonna tighten it up. Come in, clip your thread, take your fingers, pop the legs, you'll end up with four on each side, front two, back two, See if I can get those apart, there we go. And there we go. Okay, that's it. Look at the top, look at the bottom. You can still see the gap in the bottom. The legs are apart, they will not foul. That is critical. Nice looking fly, easy to tie. Even when I'm explaining this fly, I can tie it in under two minutes. I'm not sure what this timed out at, but I can get these done a minute and a half to two minutes. Very simple, very easy. Here are some of the colors that I put in the kit. We have a brown, which is nice, a buckskin, which is nice, and then a golden yellow, and then all kinds of greens. And one of my favorite color combinations is all black when the crickets come out. This is a deadly little fly, easy to tie. I'm glad you guys are interested in it. I just want you to know how to tie it the right way. I'm not dogging on the people that put videos up on YouTube. Unfortunately, they just all do it kind of wrong and they don't take uh, any instruction because none of them have ever changed it when I pointed out their mistakes, but I try to be nice about it. Anyway, there it is. If you have any more questions, let me know.